This is Tom and Paula Graves from Light of Christ Radio with a story about the refining journey of Joseph. You are welcome to watch this video simply for the story, or you can use this as the basis for a small group study. Instructions for the small group study can be found below in the Show More section. Today we continue our series called Joseph's Refining Journey based on the story of Joseph. We look at the refining that Joseph brothers experienced in Genesis chapters 42 through 44. Well, Paul, as we set the context of her story, God had taken Joseph on a refining journey. He had started as a spoiled child with dreams, and then he was sold into slavery by his brothers. And even though the brothers thought getting rid of Joseph would solve their problems, their father Jacob continued to mourn his death. Meanwhile, in Egypt, Joseph was imprisoned on a false charge of rape and forgotten in prison. Still, he continues to worship and serve his Lord. When Pharaoh had dreams that his magicians could not interpret, the cupbearer finally remembered Joseph. And Joseph was called from prison, and God enabled him to interpret Pharaoh's dreams. There would be seven years of good harvest, followed by seven years of famine. Pharaoh assigned Joseph to oversee the storage of the grain so people would survive the famine. And the famine did come, not only to Egypt, but to the surrounding areas where Joseph's family still lived. And this brings us to a story from the Word of God. Jacob learned that there was grain for sale in Egypt. And he told his sons, go buy grain in Egypt so we don't die. But Jacob would not allow Benjamin, Joseph's full brother, to go because he feared harm might come to him. So Joseph's brothers went to buy grain, and Joseph recognized them, even though they did not recognize him. And Joseph remembered the dreams of his boyhood, and then he accused them of being spies. They replied, No, we're not spies. We're brothers of our father who lives in Canaan. Our youngest brother is there with him, and one of our brothers is no more. But Joseph kept accusing them of spying and put them all in prison for three days. At that time, Joseph told them that one of them must stay, but the rest could go home with grain for their families. But they must bring the youngest brother back to Egypt. Speaking among themselves, they said, Clearly, we're being punished because of what we did to Joseph long ago. We saw his anguish when he pleaded for his life, but we wouldn't listen. That's why we're in this trouble. Didn't I tell you not to sin against the boy? Reuben asked. But you wouldn't listen, and now we have to answer for his blood. Of course, they didn't know that Joseph understood them, for they had been speaking to them through, he had been speaking to them through an interpreter. Joseph had Simeon bound and returned to prison, and then he filled their sacks with grain and returned the money to the sacks. When their brothers returned home, they were frightened to find their money in the sacks. Jacob bemoaned the loss of Simeon and would not let Benjamin go to Egypt, even though Reuben promised to keep him safe. Eventually, though, they needed more grain. Now Judah promised to take responsibility for the safety of Benjamin. And when they returned to Egypt and presented themselves to Joseph, Joseph commanded that he come into his house for a feast. The brothers were afraid that they would be made slaves. But there, to their amazement, Joseph seated them in birth order. Joseph had their grain sacks filled, but hid his silver cup in Benjamin's sack. After the brothers had started for home, Joseph sent the palace manager to chase them down. The manager told them a cup was stolen, and if it was found, that person would be enslaved. When the cup was discovered in Benjamin's sack, the brothers tore their clothing in despair. All of them returned to Joseph's palace. Now Judah told Joseph, And now, my lord, I cannot go back to my father without the boy. If he sees that the boy is not with us, our father will die. We, your servants, will indeed be responsible for sending that grieving, white-haired man to his grave. My Lord, I guaranteed my father that I would take care of the boy. I told him, if I don't bring him back to you, I will bear the blame forever. And Judah continued, so please, my Lord, let me stay here as a slave instead of the boy and let the boy return with his brothers. For how can I return to my father if the boy is not with me? I couldn't bear to see the anguish this would cause my father. And this is a story from the Word of God. If you're using this video for a small group application, after watching this video, try retelling the story from what you heard. Then read the text. Discussion questions are below in the Show More section. May this story help you on your journey of life. Be blessed.